Hi, and welcome to today's pre-recorded service here at All Saints Church, continuing with our season of summer specials, a slightly simpler format, but with most of our familiar features. This August, we're on a journey through some of the most famous sayings of Jesus, what we call the I Am sayings. And today we hear Jesus telling us that I am the Good Shepherd. I hope we can draw closer to God through all we share in this time together. And so a moment of prayer to begin. Lord, we come today to worship you. We ask that you meet with us through your Holy Spirit. Teach us through your word. Show us the love that you call us to. And give us all we need to serve you in the world. For the glory of your name and through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, let's sing together. Join in, please, by singing out, Here is love as vast as the ocean. Here is love vast as the ocean, love in kindness as the His precious blood, who is love will not remember, who can cease to sing His praise, He can never be forgotten, to our hands eternal days. On the mount of crucifixion, morning prayer during the week here at All Saints, we often share a psalm. Psalms can be words of praise and thanksgiving and also of disappointment. Psalms are a great way of speaking to God and there's a saying which goes like this, 
A psalm a day helps you work, rest and pray. So let's share a few moments now, enjoying the praise words of Psalm 100. Please say back to me the words in bold. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Well, the man who wrote most Psalms and can be said to have made them famous is King David from the Old Testament. David began life as a shepherd, a shepherd boy. And you might have noticed in that psalm that some of the words say that God's people are the sheep of his pasture. Well, it's the knowledge that a shepherd has for his sheep that's at the heart of our service today. You can always play a game at home later on to find out who knows most about you. Think of some hard questions for them to answer. What you like or dislike. How well do they know you? Well, today Jesus says, I am the good shepherd and that he knows his sheep. We're going to spend some time today finding out what he means. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheepfold. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. Those who heard these words were again divided. Many of them said, he is demon possessed and raving mad. Why listen to him? But others said, these are not the sayings of a man possessed by a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I wonder if over the years you've enjoyed, like me, seeing programmes about rural life. When I was a child, I watched One Man and His Dog. Do you remember that? Seeing shepherds rounding up sheep for their pen, sometimes disastrously and often brilliantly, as a kind of competition. And then more recently, I've seen our Yorkshire farm. I'm sure having nine children will come in handy one day. Well, in our series of Sunday talks in August, Jesus is choosing his images carefully. Images that are down to earth, memorable, and that will last. I am the bread of life. I am the gate for the sheep. And I think this one today has a special place in our hearts. It's kind of personal. It's about the relationship between the shepherd and his flock. Jesus and his people, our faithful God and us. For he says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. The I am statements declare his ministry and work. The show he is the great I am, God himself, come among us. And this is one of the most personal of them. Well, to start with, I thought I'd take a look online at what farmers say a good shepherd is. I wonder what you'd say. So here are a few things I've found. 
They say a good shepherd sees the detail of each individual sheep, knows their needs better than they do, understands what upsets or frightens them, understands what gives them an environment to live well in. And the one I really like, he knows the value of his sheepdog. Is it surprising then that when Jesus says he is the good shepherd of his people, he's saying, I know my sheep and my sheep know me. It's a close and intimate image. He knows people's needs, their fears and what can make them flourish. He is there for them. They are to gather round him and follow him. Now, a shepherd in those days would lead the flock, move with them over the hills, even sleep out to guard them and be with them 24 hours. The shepherd treasured them. For one thing, the sheep guaranteed an income, clothes and food. They were a precious possession and he stayed close. We can be given lots of lovely portraits of Jesus as the good shepherd, often benign and gentle. But what Jesus says today is that as the good shepherd, he knows his people deeply. He treasures them so much. Doesn't Psalm 139 say, You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. We all have our good and bad sides. We're not perfect by any means. We have many layers to us, a bit like a Russian doll that opens up to another doll inside, and another again, and another again. There's the exterior person which the world sees, but inside is a person who holds thoughts and motivations, some good and some maybe not good. And inside that is a person who has feelings, where they may have been hurt, the world having left its mark. And inside that there's a person who has hurt other people, left their mark on them. And at the innermost person, there's someone where self-worth and self-esteem can be fragile, maybe wondering if they can ever be forgiven. Jesus knows and understands all these layers. He's not here to harm, but to guide us, guard us, feed us, treasure us. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Despite the barriers we have inside us, Jesus says he is there for us. He is the one we can trust in. He is the one to lead us and guard us in life. For those listening to Jesus, there's clearly some shock and surprise in what he's saying. They're actually divided in their opinion about him. Is he mad or is this true? Maybe they were shocked at him declaring his closeness to the Almighty Father, saying, I know my people as the Father knows me and I know the Father. Wasn't he equating himself with God, claiming intimate knowledge of God? Or maybe they were shocked at what he was saying about a prophecy of old that they knew well. The prophet Ezekiel had said, Woe to shepherds of Israel who only take care of themselves. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. In this I am statement today, Jesus is putting himself right at the center stage of that prophecy. He is the one who has become that person. Or maybe they're surprised by the fact that he says and repeats twice more today. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He lays down his life for the sheep. What could they have made of that? Well, we know, of course, Jesus was true to his words. He did lay down his life. And after three days took it up again, he rose from death. It's fascinating that the word good in its original language has a special meaning. It means noble goodness even beautiful goodness, the noble beauty of Jesus laying down his life, that he did it for you and I. Despite all that we are, in all those layers of quirkiness and vulnerability, Jesus died in our place so that in his resurrection, he begins his life-changing work in us. How amazing is that? 
At our art exhibition last weekend, there was a picture of light permeating through a cocktail glass cracked in many places, accompanied by these words. This painting shows all the beauty of the fragmented, broken glass, and how when the light shines on it, these broken pieces shine and become something very beautiful as the light is reflected. And so it is when God shines the light of his love into our broken hearts. As well as reconnecting with each other this summer, finding the familiar again, seeing people and things we haven't seen for a year or more, there's that deeper level in us that needs attending to as well. The pandemic may well have left wounds in us. We may have been frightened, experienced loss in so many ways. We may have got used to the drawbridge being up. What is there for anyone to know about me anymore or be interested in? Maybe we've turned off our ears to the voices of others. Maybe in our faith we hear only a muffled gospel. In a way we've been shutting God out as well. Well, what the Good Shepherd says to us is that he understands it. He sees it. He wants the light of his love to shine in our closed places. He wants to reach the deepest level of your soul where he can say, you are beautiful and precious to him. That is what Jesus, when he says, I am the good shepherd, means to us. What he also wants us to do is to respond to this. Maybe coming before him for the first time, or the first time since the pandemic began. Or maybe for the umpteenth time to allow his work to carry on in us. I know my sheep and my sheep know me and I lay down my life for the sheep. I hope you can have your moment with the good shepherd because he knows us and he treasures us more than anything we might know. Amen. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you, and I will trust in you, for your endless mercy follows me, your goodness will Your 
Let us pray. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for He is our God and we are the people of His pasture, the flock under His care. Good Shepherd, within your deep and searching love, we are safe and secure, precious in your sight. Within your embrace, we feel the warmth of family and belonging. Within your fold, we grow and are nurtured together as one flock. Come, let us bow down before the Lord, our Maker. Good Shepherd, with you we find comfort and healing. We bring to you those who are frail at this time, or struggling with physical, mental or spiritual health. You are the great healer. And we pray for healing of mind and body for those we now name in the silence of our hearts. Come, let us bow down before the Lord, our Maker. Good Shepherd, by your guiding hand we find justice. We bring to you the brave voices who cry out for freedom. Those prepare to stand up and be heard without counting the cost. We pray for those who have been imprisoned or tortured for their race, colour, caste or faith. For all Christians who have taken up the cross and know its weight and pain, come let us bow down before the Lord our Maker. Good Shepherd, by your grace to us we find peace. We bring to you those orphaned or dispossessed by war. For refugees wandering this earth in search of a home. For all victims of strife and warfare. And for all those who have dedicated their lives for the search for peace and reconciliation. Come, let us bow down before the Lord our Maker. Dear Lord, accept these prayers as our heart's desire to live with you as our shepherd. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus says to his disciples, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give you my peace. Let not your hearts be troubled or afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Well, thank you for joining us today. And if you've enjoyed our worship together, then please do let your friends and family know. We conclude with just a couple of notices and then a final blessing. Next Sunday at 9am in the church hall is our next all-age service, especially suited to families and children. So please do join us. That's August the 29th at 9am in the church hall. And next Sunday is also the first of our two services of wholeness and healing. That's at three o'clock on the 29th of August. It's there for our general well-being to help us rest and receive and reflect on what we've been through and how the last year or so has affected us. It will help for the office to know if you are coming for numbers, but if you wish to come anyway, then please just come along next Sunday afternoon at three o'clock. We conclude our service then with a blessing. Christ, the good shepherd, who laid down his life for the sheep, draw you and all who hear his voice to be one flock within one fold. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen.